So now let's get going on our social app. In previous lessons, we've gone over all the building blocks that we need to get going. So this is what we're going to start with. Our main app will simply provide a button for the login, and we'll go to the login, and we'll log ourselves in, and then we'll enter the app. And we'll have a tabbed interface for contacts, photos, and messages. Through the course, we'll be building up these tabs. Let's take a look at what we've gotten so far. As I mentioned in the last lesson, when we worked on the data model, that I would flesh that out. So I've added some data model classes for the contacts, contact addresses, contact emails, and contact phone numbers. My main activity should look a little bit familiar. I retrieve a database from the assets, and I start a login looking for its activity result. And when I get that result, I get the user ID. And then when I enter the app, I start the app activity, which is that tabbed activity. The login activity is pretty similar to what we saw before, except when the login button is clicked, we call this login method, and we go to a thing called the contact manager, which uses our data object to log in, passing in the username and the password. It returns a bool if we're successful, and it will have an output parameter for that contact. If all that works, we put the user ID on our intent and return our result as OK. If that doesn't work, we use a text view to show our error message. So after we've successfully logged in and go to the app activity, we're going to have a thing called a tabbed activity, which descends from activity. And if we take a look at its resource, it has a new control called a tab host. And the tab host is what will contain our tabs. Then within each one of the tabs, we'll have a linear layout, and ultimately, the tab content will go into a frame layout. So each one of the tabs is actually a separate activity. So let's see how that's built in code. We create an object called a tab host tab spec, and we're going to reuse that for each tab. Each tab will also have an intent for the activity that's associated with the tab. So our first tab uses the contacts activity. So we create an intent for that, and we set a flag for new task. That affects the way the back button handles it. A new task will essentially clear when it goes for the back button. We put our user ID, so we're passing that data. We give a name to the tab spec and the indicator, which is the text on the tab. Then on that tab spec, we set the content equal to the intent, and we add the spec to the tab host. We repeat that process for the three tabs, the photo activity and the messages activity. The tab activities themselves are very simple at this point. All they have is a text view on them, and we just set the text view. You'll note that it's a regular activity. It has an onCreate method and a set content view, just like a normal activity. So even though it's in a tab host, it acts and behaves as a normal activity. The other thing is, it doesn't really know anything in particular about its parent. So it's not like some of the Windows controls that you may have seen before where the tabs are all on one page or one WinForm. They're actually separate activities, so they obey the same rules as regular activities in terms of passing data. So that's the rough structure of our application, and we'll be building up that Contacts tab in future lessons.